Most gardeners argue about compost, manure, or fertilizers. Very few realize that one of the most powerful soil amendments is already sitting in their kitchen. Rice, in its raw, cooked or watered form, has been quietly transforming soil biology for generations. Used correctly, it can wake up dormant soil, supercharge microbial life, and unlock nutrients that plants struggle to access. Used incorrectly, it can attract pests, cause rot, or do absolutely nothing. Today we're settling the debate once and for all, and breaking down which form of rice truly reigns supreme in the garden. If you care about soil life, nutrient cycling, and long-term fertility, this is one secret you'll want to master. Why rice matters to soil more than most amendments, rice is not fertilizer in the traditional sense, it doesn't directly feed plants, instead, rice feeds soil microbes, and microbes feed plants. That distinction is everything. Soil bacteria and fungi require carbon-rich energy sources to multiply. When they thrive, they unlock nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and trace minerals already trapped in your soil. Rice is primarily starch, which is a fast to moderate energy source for microbes. Unlike wood chips that take years to break down or sugars that vanish too quickly, rice occupies a sweet spot. Depending on how it's used, it can trigger either a slow microbial bloom or a rapid explosion of activity. That is why the form of rice you choose matters so much. Raw rice and the slow burn soil strategy. Raw rice is the most misunderstood option, yet it's incredibly effective when patience is part of your gardening style. Raw rice grains break down slowly in soil, especially when buried a few inches deep. Microbes must first colonize the surface then gradually digest the starch locked inside the grain. This slow digestion creates a long-lasting microbial food source. Instead of a sudden spike followed by a crash, you get steady microbial activity for weeks or even months. That makes raw rice ideal for garden beds that need rebuilding, compacted soils, or perennial systems where you don't want rapid nutrient swings. To apply raw rice properly, use one cup of uncooked white or brown rice per 10 square feet of soil. Lightly crush the grains with a rolling pin or pulse them briefly in a blender to increase surface area. Sprinkle evenly over the soil, then water with one gallon of water per 10 square feet to push the grains slightly into the soil surface. Covering with mulch dramatically improves results by preventing birds and drying. Raw rice wins in longevity, soil stability, and low risk when applied correctly. Cooked rice and rapid microbial ignition. Well, that's really the opposite approach compared to using raw grains. When rice is cooked, the starch gelatinizes, making it instantly accessible to microbes. The moment cooked rice hits moist soil, bacteria and fungi explode in numbers. This rapid bloom can be incredibly useful when soil is biologically dead or when plants are showing signs of nutrient lockout, even though fertility seems adequate. Cooked rice truly shines as a soil rescue tool. It can jumpstart microbial populations in tired beds, raised planters, or container soils that have lost life. But, you know, speed comes with responsibility. If applied too thickly or left on the surface, cooked rice can rot anaerobically, smell foul, or even attract pests. The correct formula really matters here. Use one cup of cooked plain rice with no salt or oil for every 10 square feet of soil. Break it apart with your hands until it resembles loose grains, not clumps. Next, mix it lightly into the top inch of soil, then water with one gallon of water per 10 square feet. Always apply in the morning so soil organisms can process it during those warm daylight hours. Cooked rice reigns supreme for fast results, but only when precision and moderation are respected. Rice water and the liquid biology boost. Now rice water is often dismissed as weak, but that's a mistake. While it contains far less starch than whole rice, it offers something different. Rice water delivers soluble carbohydrates directly into the soil solution, making it instantly available to microbes without needing physical breakdown. Rice water is especially powerful for activating microbial life around roots. It works best as a soil drench rather than a surface amendment. This makes it ideal for seedlings, transplants, container plants and gardens where disturbing the soil isn't desirable. 
To make effective rice water, you'll want to rinse one cup of uncooked rice in about two liters of water stirring it vigorously for around 30 seconds. The water should turn cloudy, but not too thick. Next, strain out the rice and then dilute that cloudy water with two more liters of clean water, giving you a total of four liters. When you're ready to use it, just apply it directly to the soil around your plants, using roughly one liter for every five square feet. Rice water doesn't really build long-term organic matter, but you know it really excels at fast microbial stimulation with minimal risk. The honest answer is that, well, no single form wins in every situation. Raw rice is best for long-term soil rebuilding, cooked rice is your go-to for rapid soil revival, and rice water, it's great for precision feeding and gentle activation. The real power, honestly, comes from knowing when to use each one. For new garden beds or depleted soil, raw rice should be your foundation. For struggling plants or lifeless soil, cooked rice delivers immediate biological relief. For young plants, containers, and maintenance feeding, rice water offers controlled stimulation without disruption. Experienced gardeners often rotate all three across the season. Early spring favors cooked rice to wake soil. Mid-season favors rice water to support roots. Fall favors raw rice to feed soil life through decomposition. The biggest mistake gardeners make is overuse. More rice does not mean more benefit. Excess starch can overwhelm soil oxygen levels and favor harmful microbes. Another mistake is leaving rice exposed on the surface, where it attracts birds, rodents, and flies. Rice must always be lightly incorporated or protected with mulch. Using seasoned or salted rice is another silent killer. Salt damages soil structure and harms microbes. Rice must always be plain. Finally, applying rice to already waterlogged soil creates anaerobic conditions that work against plant health. Modern gardening is flooded with bottled solutions promising instant results. Rice works because it supports the soil food web rather than bypassing it. It costs almost nothing, adapts to different soil needs, and builds resilience instead of dependency. When soil microbes thrive, plants gain access to nutrients that fertilizers can't unlock, roots grow deeper, disease resistance improves, and watering needs decrease. Rice doesn't replace compost or good practices, but it amplifies everything you're already doing right. Rice is not a gimmick, it's a biological tool. Raw rice builds, cooked rice revives, and rice water fine-tunes. When you match the form to the goal, soil transformation follows naturally. This is the kind of knowledge that separates gardeners who fight their soil from those who work with it. If you found this guide useful, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more soil smart strategies, share this with a fellow gardener who's struggling with their beds, and keep growing smarter every season.